Taking the SAT is not all about knowledge. It's about knowing how to play the game. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys my top 10 strategies I teach my students that they use on the digital SAT to boost their score without even having to study. Let's get into it. All right, strategy number 10. When you are on a comparative text one, text two question on the English, you wanna eliminate positive sounding answer choices. Guys, the two authors or the two researchers from text one and text two, they're gonna disagree in some way. So make sure you get rid of any positive sounding answer choices that don't sound like disagreement. Using this strategy can narrow it down to the right one or to two, and then all you need to do is with a 50-50, figure out which one's better. Strategy number nine, you wanna eliminate transition words that come from the same category. So if you're on a transition question, they're gonna give you four different words and some of them function the same way. So to give you an example, thus and therefore are both causation words. So if you see thus and therefore as answer choices, you have to cross them both off because there's only one right answer in multiple choice. Now, if you're interested in practicing transition questions as well as other types of questions when you're out and about and on the go, Preply was the first ever digital SAT prep app available in the App Store and Google Play, and it's helped hundreds and hundreds of students across the globe improve their digital SAT scores. So you can hone in on your weaknesses, prep on the go, time quizzes, drills, whatever way you wanna prep, and it's a lot of fun too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw the link up here. Go get Preply today, and it'll be down in the description for you as well. Strategy number eight, you can use your scrap paper as a ruler. So if you're on a geometry question and the figure is drawn to scale, which by the way, you will know it's drawn to scale because they will tell you if it's not, and they want a length of a side and you can't figure out how to get it, just take your scrap paper, measure another side length on the picture, hold it right up to the computer screen, no shame in that, and then your measurement you can use to see how many times it fits in the side that you need. Easy peasy. It's a way to get a lot of extra points and you're semi-cheating, but not really. Strategy number seven is pick and stick. Well, what does pick and stick mean? So if you're running out of time, which happens a lot with students, especially on module two of the English, let's say you have two minutes left, but 10 questions to go. You know you're not gonna get to all 10 questions. What you should do is pick, with a, le pick a letter and stick with it. So I would recommend you go with D because I think the test designers towards the end of a module like to bury the right answer at the bottom more often. So if you just click D, 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 at least a couple of those questions, the right answer will be D. So you're guaranteed to pick up points. All right, strategy number six. This is a math guessing strategy. If you're not sure, pick a middle number in the range. So make sure you guys cross off any outliers and then go with the middle number of what's left if that's relevant. But I've found that middle numbers tend to be right more often than numbers on the outsides. It's just gonna give you a higher probability of getting the point when you're desperate. Strategy number five, logically completes the text questions. Okay guys, this is arguably the toughest question on the English modules. But what I have found is that 75% of the time, these texts are structured in a very specific and predictable format. So what you wanna do on a logically completes the text question is look for the contrast statement because how they structure it is they start with an introduction, then they tell you the old belief, what people used to think or what researchers used to believe. And then they introduce a new belief, like scientists recently found that da 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 da. Off of that new belief, you're going to base your conclusion, your logical conclusion. So with a new belief, usually the beginning of it will be a contrast word, like however, nevertheless, because it's contrasting with the old belief. So pinpoint that contrast statement, that's the new belief, read that, base your logical conclusion off of that. It'll make it way easier to get more points on these. Now that being said, do you want more strategies for the English modules? I have an amazing self-paced course I designed myself. 
It has exclusive video lessons that walk you through how to do each type of English question so that you can gain mastery and improve your score at least 100 points on the English. So for my YouTube viewing community, because I love you guys so much, I am giving a special $50 discount off the course if you use 50 off at checkout. So go ahead, click the link up here to go check that out. I'll also throw it down in the description for you. All right, strategy number four is working backwards. This is a great strategy when you're stuck on a math question and you cannot figure out for the life of you how to set up an equation. So if you see numbers in the answer choices, start with the answer choices, put them into the problem until one of them works. And here's a little tip for you. I would start with B or C, because if you start with a middle number, you'll be able to gauge if you need to go bigger or go smaller and you can get to the right answer quicker. Strategy number three deals with subject verb agreement questions. On the English sections, if you have answer choices that are all different verb tenses, you are probably on a subject verb agreement question. So what I want you to do is use the pronoun trick. Take the pronoun he and put it in front of every single verb tense you see. If it works for three of them and not one, pick the one it doesn't work on. If it only works on one of them and not three of them, pick the one it works on. Essentially, you want to pick the answer choice that is different from all the rest. That's going to be the right answer. All right, go ahead and comment below. I would love to hear from you guys. What is your favorite strategy that I've covered with you so far? All right, strategy number two is nice numbers. Nice numbers is when you have those abstract, confusing math questions with all the variables in them. So what you can do instead is take a number for the variable. I would recommend using the number two because it's very easy to work with. Don't use zero or one because they do funky things, but put two in for the variable into the problem and see what you get. Then take that same number two, put it into the answer choices for the variable until you get the same number. It's much easier to approach it this way, working with real numbers instead of abstract variables. All right, if this video is helping you so far, go ahead, show me some love, hit the like button below, and let's get to our last strategy. All right, guys, so strategy number one is use the Desmos built-in calculator. I cannot stress to you guys enough how useful of a tool this is on the new test. When you get to a very complicated algebra problem, or more specifically, when they give you a system of two equations, Desmos is going to be your hero. Just type the two equations into Desmos, take a look at what, you're, what you need. For instance, if you need to find where they intersect, go ahead, just look for it right on the graph and you are done. It will save you so much time and stress and it will definitely improve your math score. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it until the end. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, go ahead and comment below tricks. That way I'll know that you were here with me all the way. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you start to practice using these strategies when you're prepping. And until next time, happy prepping.